Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward T. Fabella, and I'm here to discuss attachment styles. All right, so what is attachment? Let's look at the picture there, and uh, what we see is a mother and her child. So eventually, there is a bond that is built between the mother and her child. So let's find out what attachment or how attachment is developed. So attachment can be defined as a deep and enduring emotional bond between two people in which each seeks closeness and feels more secure when in the presence of the attachment figure. Attachment behavior in adults towards the child includes responding sensitively and appropriately to the child's needs. Such behavior appears universal across cultures. Attachment theory explains how the parent-child relationship emerges and influences subsequent development. So here we will explore how attachment is formed and what its effects are in uh, the development of a child. All right. So it was widely thought that the attachment between the infant and the mother has something to do with dependence. Remember that the infant or the baby is dependent on the mother for what? For nutrition, for safety, and so on. But it was Harry Harlow who conducted an experiment involving baby, baby or young monkeys, and he tried to explore this question. Okay, so what he did was he conducted an experiment. He created two artificial monkeys. One of them had a feeding bottle and it looked like this. There is a wire mesh, so we can call this the wire monkey. And then you had another monkey who had terry cloth around it but did not have a feeding bottle. Okay, so there are two artificial monkeys there. And the question is, if there is a baby monkey, to which uh, artificial monkey will it cling to when it is afraid? All right, so that is the question that Harlow attempted to explain. So he had a number of baby monkeys. Okay, so what was the result? The result is that the infant monkeys overwhelmingly preferred to cling to the cloth mother even though it did not have a feeding bottle. So we can see here that attachment is not just about uh, dependence on the ability of the mother to uh, provide the needs of the baby monkey. All right. So where did attachment theory come from? It was John Bowlby, a psychiatrist who who handled children in London. Uh, these children were emotionally disturbed and he came up with the idea that because they were disturbed, it could be due to early infant separations with the mother. So if there is separation, of course, there is no attachment. And it, this was what led Balbi to believe that uh, the uh, lack of attachment could lead to the maladjustment of these children. Okay, so he formulated his attachment theory. But how do you measure attachment? It was Marie Ainsworth who was able to devise a technique called the Strange Situation Classification or SSC. Right? This was her technique in order to measure the attachment of different children to their mothers. So how did she conduct this, uh, this technique? So if you look at the picture there, this is the setup, okay? So there is an experiment involving a mother, a, the mother's child, and a stranger. That's why it's called the strange situation or the strange experiment. So let's look at how it was done. So the experiment is set up in a small room with one-way glass. So the behavior of the infant can be observed covertly. So the infant is unaware that he or she is being observed. The infants were aged uh, 12 to 18 months. And the sample comprised of 100 middle-class American families. 
All right, so now we know who the respondents are or the subjects of the experiment and how it was set up. Okay, so let's look at an actual execution of this strange situation. What was the procedure? So the first step, if you look at the picture there, there is the mother there on the right, and then you have the mother's child on the floor playing with toys, and then you have the stranger on the left, okay? The stranger remains quiet at first while the infant is playing and the mother is just seated there. Okay, after an inter interval, the stranger starts talking in a friendly way with the mother and after a while moves to the floor and starts to play with the child. Okay, so you can see there in the picture that the stranger is now interacting with the child. And then later, the mother gets up and leaves the room leaving only the child and the stranger. The stranger stays and tries to play with the child, right? After a period, the mother re-enters the room and returns to her chair. The stranger leaves the room. Then after a further interval, the mother gets up and leaves the room again, leaving the child alone. All right, so all throughout this time, the child is being observed. After a period, the stranger enters, offers comfort to the child if necessary, and tries to play with the child again. Finally, the mother returns, the stranger leaves the room, and the mother and child remain in the room for a few more minutes. All right, so how did they assess the behavior of the infant? So if you look at the uh, table here, you see there proximity and contact seeking contact maintaining, proximity and interaction avoiding, proximity and interaction resisting, and searching. And then they, these behaviors of the infant were rated and observed and recorded every 15 seconds. So that's how the strange situation was assessed. All right. So what was the result of the experiment? Uh, Ainsworth was able to come up with three types of attachment styles based on the behavior of the infant in all these situations. All right, so if you have a secure attachment style, you see there uh, the categories of behavior. You have separation anxiety, stranger anxiety, reunion behavior and other behaviors that were exhibited. Okay, so in secure attachment, the infant is distressed when the mother leaves. And intense distress when the mother leaves, when there is resistant attachment. But in avoidant attachment, there is no sign of distress when the mother leaves. All right, how about stranger anxiety? In secure attachment, you have uh, avoidant of stranger. So the infant avoids the stranger when alone, but friendly when the mother is present. Okay, so the infant is friendly towards the stranger when the mother is present. That's in a secure attachment style. However, in resistant attachment style, the infant avoids the stranger and shows fear of the stranger. While in avoidant attachment style, the infant is okay with the stranger and plays normally when the stranger is present. All right, how about reunion behavior? Infant who has secure attachment style will exhibit a positive and happy attitude when the mother returns. In a resistant attachment style, the infant approaches the mother but resists contact may even push the mother away. All right. In avoidant attachment style, the infant shows little interest when the mother returns. Okay, so these are the highlights of secure, resistant, and avoidant attachment styles exhibited by the infant. Okay, so what are the implications of these attachment styles? Let's find out. The best predictor of attachment style in adults 
are the perceptions that people have about the quality of their relationships with their parents as well as their parents' relationship with each other. All right. So in secure attachment style, let's look at the side of the adults. When the child grows up with a secure attachment style, the adult will have trusting, lasting relationships. They tend to have good self-esteem. They share feelings with partners and friends, and they seek out social support. In ambivalent attachment style, adults are, become reluctant to get close to others. They worry that their partner does not love them, and they become very distraught when relationships end. In avoidant attachment style, the adults may have problems with intimacy. So they have problems in becoming intimate with a partner. They invest little emotion in social and romantic relationships. And they are unwilling or unable to share thoughts or feelings with others. Okay, so there is no question that our earliest relationships with caregivers play a role in development. By better understanding the role of attachment, you can gain a greater appreciation of how the earliest attachments in your life may impact adult relationships. So that concludes our discussion about attachment styles and the attachment theory. So thank you very much for watching. Okay, so goodbye.